it goes to SEMA, then we'll bring it home and just beat it. Beat it is the plan. Power Nation is brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, powered by enthusiasts. Well, I'm stepping out of the Detroit Muscle Shop for a minute and gonna go hang out with a friend of mine. And I hear he's brought a looker along with him. Man, that's a beaut. Hey, big guy, how you doing, man? Good, Tommy. Appreciate you having me here. Yes, sir. Man, you've got one beautiful ride sitting in here. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're kind of proud of it. Yeah, I mean, you should be, absolutely. Man, this, this thing has got quite a few mods done to it, but they're tasteful mods and almost makes you think, did he change it? So we, we kind of wanted to take the cheesy 70s plasticness out of a Trans Am. Yeah, it's got it was, a bunch of that, doesn't it? It was a little gaudy and over the top <laughs> at the time. The car we call the mullet missile because mm -hmm. of the air, but we tried to take the plastic out of it. The rear spoiler is made out of metal. Uh, we tucked the, the back bumper about three inches in the rear. We dropped the lower quarter on it. And uh, probably one of the biggest things people notice is the flush mount glass. Now, did, did you use the stock glass to make that? We built the car around a piece of prototype glass, hoping. Mm. <laughs> Bow fingers, <laughs> right? Yeah, bow's fingers. Well, we can move metal and paint, but we can bend glass and move glass. But it fit very well when we got, so we were pleasantly surprised about it. Back here on the bumper, I know that thing isn't stock by any means. No, I, th I think it somewhat emulates a stock bumper. We just cleaned it up. So the bumpers on these fit horrible, and, mm -hmm. they, and they were plastic, and they were much wider. So we took an inch and a half out of each corner of the bumper and moved them in. And then we dropped the quarter panels about an inch and a half on the back to make them more level so it doesn't have the, the, the ugly kick up on it. And of course, you can see the big tires underneath and the full Rytec chassis underneath it. And it's tubbed and we can fit some big 325s on the rear. Mike Curtis, who does all our wheels, cut the one-off wheels for us. And they kind of look like a honeycomb-ish from the 70s, just a little modern upgrade with a big fat sticky tire underneath it. What about this fender flare? All the fender flares originally were some sort of fiberglass plastic composite garbage <laughs> that never fit. So uh, Mike at the shop fabricated all steel flares on the front and the rear. The door handles themselves, uh, we wanted to clean that up and slick it up. They're off a new Nissan GTR. We had to order them from Japan. What about the rockers? The rocker doesn't look right on the car. No. Meaning it looks like it's been altered or something. It has. So normally they have a pinch weld and the body kind of rolls underneath to meet the pinch weld. Oh, yeah. About an inch of a pinch weld on the bottom. So we just kind of squared that off and dropped it a little bit. And it, you know, it gives the illusion of it being a little closer to the ground. Yeah, it almost gives it like a ground effect on it, but it's built into it because it's not plastic. You know what I mean? I really like how you change the, the grating in here too on the the louvers on the side and it matches the interior pieces as well. It does, it matches the interior and the back of the scoop. The scoop is functional with the same. So that's actually- Does it open. have the flipper in it or is it just screened? No, it's, it's just screened, opened up. So originally oh, they were yeah. closed off and sucked air out of the front or in the bottom of the air cleaner. We're not smart enough to calculate exactly how much air we need. So we figured <laughs> more was better. There you go, I got you. Now the headlights and the grill isn't stock by any means. So where, why, and how? We still wanted you to know that it was a 78 Trans Am, which I think we pulled off. But the square, ugly headlights of the late 70s and early 80s GMs, we wanted to get rid of. So uh, we, we got some halogen lights, uh, projector lights we put in there, and we have the halos around it. And again, with the front bumper, we pulled it in an inch, inch and a half on both sides because they really stuck out. Kind of let everybody know that it's, it's not plastic anymore in the front flares. We put that little indentation on the side of the front flares. Okay, the main focal point on the front of this yeah, thing. Yeah, the bird. Is the bird. The brother. bird. That's now, bad, ain't it? Uh, <laughs> dude, it's it's impressive for sure. So. Did you do all the, the little engine turning stuff? I would love to take credit for that. Mm, was your finger I'm, sore? I'm a painter. Right? I'm not an artist. That takes an artist. I had Jeremy Sainer come down to South Carolina and he did pretty much this whole thing freehand. He masked it out. Even the black is hand striped and he laid all the real silver leaf down there and turned it all himself. Just curious, how much time is just in the bird? Guesstimation. Well, guesstimation. Between actually doing the bird, waiting in the time, drinking beer, riding side by sides and motorcycles, and me screwing yeah, it up I'm, one time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's a long time. Right. So mm -hmm. I probably don't even want to know. 
Well, let's talk about the interior. Now, first thing, I'm a huge fan of red interior because there's just something about how they pop, if you will. And then the stitch on this is impressive. It's bad, right? Did you do that? Yeah, I didn't do that either. You didn't do it, man. Again, I'm not that talented. So Chuck Hanna has done every interior for me for the past 20 years, and he always kills it with the design. And I kind of give him a concept and an idea, and he runs with it. And uh, he has a young lady named Lisa that works for him, and all the stitching on the interior is hand stitched. That's not a machine stitch. So she spent weeks hand stitching the entire tiger cage, the console, the dash, the seats is all hand stitched. And if you look at it, it looks uniform, almost like a machine did it, right? It's just unbelievable what some skill sets that people have. And I ain't talking about you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Papa's hood, we gotta see what's under here. All right. Hmm, that's pretty sweet. Not kinda quite like the 6.6 later that yeah, the, came in it. Unbelievably clean. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, and then I don't mean as in like, doesn't have dust on it. A lot of people kinda wonder if it actually functions and where we hide like batteries and radiators and overflow tanks and. So you're saying if you took this engine cover off? That's where we hide the ugly. It's ugly. Yeah. That's where we hide the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Under everything yeah. there. Now obviously it's an LS, but what kind of power does it make and what's the size of it? It's a six liter, 600 horsepower LS. 600 horse, so you're saying it's a little bit peppy? A little bit. Now we haven't actually driven it yet, but you can just tell moving it around, it's gonna get it. When are you gonna do the big smoky burnout? <laughs> Well, we did little not so smoky burnouts already, <laughs> just playing around. Okay. So after, after SEMA, so when it goes to SEMA, then we'll bring it home and just beat it. Beat it. Is the plan. You know, the idea was to build a $30,000, $40,000 burnout car when we started this project. Right. And, uh, yeah, we missed the mark. I was going to ask you, <laughs> what made you choose a Firebird Trans Am? I was laying in bed one Sunday morning watching Smokey and Bandit for like the 150th time. I understand. Because when it's on, you have to stop and watch it. I got you. So I'm thinking, I'd like to have me one of them. Well, this one's not black or gold. Well, that was the original idea. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I screwed this whole deal Man, up. Man, <laughs> I tell you, I, I think you messed up at the, but you're still okay. So we, we started this project and, and uh, I had them deliver the car while I was on the road somewhere uh, last year at SEMA or something. So when I got home and I, I looked at the thing and we started cutting whacking on it and I didn't like the way the bumpers fit and I didn't like the rockers and I didn't like the quarter panels. And So what you're saying, you just couldn't leave it alone? Yeah, I'm stupid that way. You know, picking the correct color for a car is very difficult. The correct color in the wheels and tires can make or break any car. Absolutely. So I ride around new car parking lots everywhere. And I've always liked a combination of silver red. So it was originally black, mm -hmm. I lost that. So then it was gonna do like a blue with the red gut or uh, bronze with the red gut. But silver with the red gut is kind of like timeless, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the color is actually from a new BMW. It's called Donington Gray. And when you get in the sun, the thing really pops. But, was it uh, hard to spray? Um, I don't care who you are, any silvers. <laughs> Well, I just wanted you to, I, this was a test to see how good of friends we are when you're like, oh no, it was easy, not a problem. You're like, it's silver. Yes. It's, it's it silver. And yeah. there's, you know, um, this is all uh, Exalta Chroma Base on here, which is a great product and, and we love their stuff. However, it's still silver and the only thing in it is uh, aluminum, of course mm -hmm. aluminum. And there's no- A few binders. And yeah. Some silver so flakes. you're throwing like silver flakes through some stuff at the, you know, mm -hmm. and hope it lands on the metal correctly. I got you, big guy. Why did you choose a Trans Am other than the Bandit, you know? Did, is that the only reason you chose it? Uh, no, once I decided to make the changes to the car and clean it up, I did no longer want to be a Bandit. I was afraid if I did it, a black and gold Trans Am, it would just meld in with the rest of the black and gold. You know, the Trans Am of this era, some guys, you know, they've kind of abused them for a while. You know, they were almost, uh, you weren't cool if you had one, but you were cool, but it was a different cooling almost in a way, if that makes any sense. I get it. Because we all, or I know you from having the, the 50 style custom, like and mid 70s Trans Am is nothing like a, nothing. a drop top Cadillac, man. You know, I, I can remember when I was in school, you know, the, the guy in school that, that had the, the killer mullet, 
and you know, and was drinking beer after. There was a killer mullet? Yeah. Okay. I wore it too, man. I understand. So, I understand. Uh, you know, but it had the cigarettes rolled up in the sleeve, and I can just picture that dude sitting in the seat of this Trans Am with the cigarettes up there, you know, giving the rock and sound What's with his the mullet blowing. And What's his first name? Dolph. Dolph. <laughs> <laughs> He's working for me out here right now. <laughs> That's cool. A driver's side T-top does not exist for these cars. What do you mean it don't exist? You can't get one. Really? No. We have a theory on it. So every time Dolph with the mullet went and got him a six pack of beer, he slid it across the roof. Okay. And they're scratched up. And you cannot find a driver's side T-top. It's not scratched. It's not scratched. Well, brother, I can say you knocked it out of the park. That I is a good looking car. You.